Simenon's Maigret, a series of plays based on the novels of Georges Simenon. Another hot day, Jules. Paris can be stifling this time of year. Mm, empty, too. The lucky ones have folded their tents and stolen away to the beaches. Are you getting away this year? Oh, I doubt it. I get a holiday every other year if I'm lucky. It's too busy. Not many sea breezes find their way to the Quai des Orfèvres. Georges, where were you born? Liège. Of course, I'd forgotten. Why? No, you were born inland, like me. Now, I have a theory that for us and people like us, the seaside never seems quite real. It's an artificial, carefree world where nothing very serious can happen. You should know better than that. <laughs> I should indeed. As a policeman, I do, but that's another matter. Actually, my last visit to the coast was purely professional. The setting couldn't have been more charming. But serious things had happened there, all right. There's nothing more serious than murder. Maurice Denham as Jules Maigret, Michael Goff as Georges Simenon, and Amy Delamain as Valentine Besson in Maigret and the Old Lady, translated by Robert Brain and adapted for radio by Betty Davis. It happened at Etretat, a pretty little coastal town. It was late in the season, September in fact, and once more I hadn't had a holiday. So I was very drawn to the idea when Valentine Besson asked me to go down. Wasn't she connected with Ferdinand Besson, the Juva products man? That's right. They're old-fashioned now, but I can remember my mother using Juva cream. Probably yours did, too. Now, Ferdinand made a packet out of them, anyhow, and Valentine was his widow. A rich old lady. Well, not all that rich, actually, but she was beautifully turned out. And she was the prettiest, daintiest old lady you can imagine. Snow white hair and eyes so blue they dazzled you. Young eyes. She told me somebody was trying to poison her. I'm not mad, Inspector, and I'm certain I'm not even mistaken. May I tell you the whole story? Please do, madame. Since my husband died 15 years ago, I lived alone at Etretat. That is, not quite alone. I had a maid, a local girl, Rose. Had? She's left your service? No. She's dead. When did she die? On Sunday night. She was poisoned. And I'm sure it was meant for me. Hmm. Tell me about it. Rose came from Ypres, a fishing village near Etretat. And she'd been with me a long time. Every night she brought me a sleeping raft. I suffer from insomnia and I've been taking it for 20 years. On Sunday night, it tasted very bitter. I thought I'd made a mistake mixing it, so I left it and told Rose to take it away. And did she? Yes. She must have drunk it. The glass was found empty in her room. I see. When exactly did she die? At two in the morning, I heard her groaning. I got up and so did my daughter. I thought you said you lived alone. Sunday was my birthday. My daughter Arlette came down from Paris and stayed the night. Mm. We found Rose in convulsions. And by the time the doctor arrived, she was dead. He said it was poison. Arsenic. The local police are investigating? Yes, Inspector Castling from Le Havre. Ah, I know him. What does he say? Nothing. Yet. And you see, Inspector, I came to Paris because... Although you don't know me, I know you. I've followed your distinguished career for years. I have lots of newspaper cuttings about you at home. Oh, uh, excuse me. Uh, Maigret. Can you speak to me in my office for a moment? At once? Yes, if it's possible. Right, I'll come straight round, sir. Excuse me, madame, the chief of police wants to speak to me urgently. I'll be back as soon as I can. Ah, hello, Maigre. Uh, would a few days by the sea tempt you at all? At Etretat? 
How do you know? Oh, I don't know. It was a guess. Go on. I've had a telephone call from the minister's office. Do you know Shao Besson? Jouva Creams? Not exactly. He's the founder's son, though. He lives at Facon and was elected deputy for the saying inferior two years ago. And his mother lives at Etretat? Stepmother. Hmm. She was Ferdinand Besson's second wife. Shire Besson's asked for you to take up the case. His stepmother's maid was poisoned on Sunday night. Do you read the Normandy papers? No, the old lady's in my office. And she wants you on the case too? Yes, she obviously doesn't know that Charles has asked for me. And what have you decided? Well, that's up to you, Chief. I was going to ask you to go there straight away. I'm sure you could do with a bit of sea air. So there I was in a neat little local train chugging my way to Etretat. Yes. Do you know, I still feel that fascination, that delicious slight shock at the first sight of the sea from the train. Ah, yes, I remember that feeling well, but for me it's gone, I'm afraid. A loss. I must be farther from my childhood than you are, Georges. Mm -hmm. uh, the station master at Etretat gave me a message from Inspector Castor. He was at Rosie's funeral and would meet me later. He turned up at midday. And how did the funeral go? Oh, rather badly. Uh, in what way? Uh, Valentine brought a huge wreath that put the others to shame. Well, she might have been chief mourner. And the girl's family didn't like it. Was her daughter at the funeral? No. She went back to Paris on Monday. Charles Besson wasn't there either. Nor Théo. Théo? Uh, the second stepson. Hmm. He's been staying here a couple of weeks. With his stepmother? No. No, they've been on bad terms for years. He was only at the birthday dinner because Charles met him in a bar and dragged him along. Theo bends the elbow a bit. Mm. So the whole family were at the dinner on Sunday. How long did they stay afterwards? Charles Besson and his family left at nine. Theo went a few minutes later. He's a bachelor, by the way. Mm. And then there were just the three women in the house, Valentine, Arlette and the maid. Except that... Yes? Arlette had a man in her room. Huh? Did she tell you that? No, I found out. I searched the house on Monday, no, you see, and... Wait, wait, wait a minute. I, I'm getting hungry. You can tell me about it over lunch. Do you think I'll be able to have muscles? Oh, possibly. I wouldn't bank on it, though. Oh, a place like this, there should be muscles. Let's go back and eat. <laughs> no muscles. <laughs> I told you not to bank on it. Mm. Well, now, I'll let. What's she like? She's 38 and looks 25. Small and slim, very pretty. Enormous eyes, like Valentine's. She's married to a dentist. And he presumably didn't come down with her? No, he didn't. But I found a man's handkerchief in her room. She was very upset. What did she do? I snatched it from me and said it was her husband's. But the initial on it was H, and her husband's name is Julien Soud. I didn't find that out till afterwards. Any idea who the man was? Yes. Arlette said she'd come down by train, but she was lying. She was seen arriving in a pale green sports car with a man. He was easy enough to trace. Hervé Perrault. He stayed at this hotel. The night porter says he didn't go to bed till half past two. He'd gone for a walk. It was two o'clock when Rose started to grow. <laughs> yes. And that must have frightened him off pretty quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Were there many people at the funeral? The whole of Ypres was there. Oh, the men will all be drunk by this evening. What? I'll try this white wine. It's not bad. A little Calvados, Inspector? It's just over 30 years old. Oh, thank you. I shall have a drop as well to keep you company, provided you won't be shocked. Do please smoke your pipe, I love it. Oh, thank you. My late husband filled this place with cigar smoke. You know, I never imagined that one day the famous Inspector Maigret would be sitting in that chair. Mm. By the way, didn't you tell me you'd get some newspaper articles about me? That's right. I cut them out. Oh, do you have them here? I think I could find them. They're probably in here. Oh, dear. I must have put them in my bedroom. 
I'll go up. No, please don't bother, madame. Isn't that terrible? Now you think I said all that in Paris to flatter you and persuade you to come here. I really did keep them, Inspector. But Rose wasn't a very tidy person and things got lost. Now, I expect you have heaps of questions to ask me. But first, your health, Monsieur Maitre. And yours, madame. Does your daughter often come to see you? Once a year on my birthday. The rest of the time I hear nothing of her. You haven't seen Arlette, have you? Not yet. She looks as though butter wouldn't melt in her mouth. Poor Julien. Does your daughter love her husband? I'm not sure she's capable of loving anybody. Why do you say that? When my first husband died, I worked in a pastry shop here. Arlette, a child of seven, said to me, Do you think I like having a mother who sells cakes to my friends? That's what she was like then. She hasn't changed. Mm. Tell me about your first husband. Ah, oh, he was very gentle and very sweet. But he died of tuberculosis soon after we were married. I was left with Arlette. And then you got the job in the shop? Yes. The Surrey sisters owned it. One is dead now. And the other's still alive, but she's 92. She lives almost next door. One day, Ferdinand Besson came into the shop. We were married a few months later. How old were you then? I was 33 and he was 55. Do you know his history? Oh, I know he owned Jouva products. Yes. He was a small local chemist. Then he patented Jouva cream and made a fortune overnight. His poor wife died soon after. And then he married me. I was part of his new lifestyle. What do you mean? He wasn't used to money, you see. He hardly knew what to do with it. He needed a pretty wife to dress up and show off. But Parisian women terrified him. He felt at home with me because I was only a shop girl. Do you understand? <laughs> yes, my love, I think I do. He covered me with jewels. He sent me to the big dress houses. He even built a yacht. Was he happy? Happy? Oh, Inspector, that I don't know. I think he was always afraid people were laughing at him. You see, he had his money too late. Mm. Now, what about Arlette? Did she enjoy it all? I can't answer that. At 20, she suddenly married this boy we didn't even know. I've never understood her. Did you get on well with your stepson? Charles has always treated me as if I were his mother. Theo, who didn't like me. Were you surprised to find him here at eight time? Yes, I didn't even know he was staying here until Charles brought him to dinner. We haven't spoken for years. Well, I was telling you about the money. It all went. Ferdinand overreached himself. We had to sell the yacht and then the chateau and then all my jewels. I was left with imitations. His last years were sad. He died alone in a hotel in Paris. He'd gone there in the hope of a business deal. And then you settled here? Yes. We'd had the house for years as a sort of pied-à-terre. I felt at home in Etretat. Even though nearly everyone I knew in my youth had gone. Well, Mademoiselle Surrey is still here, you say? She's about the only one. Some more Calvados? Uh, oh, uh, thank you. Tell me, madame, have you never suspected that your daughter had a lover? Good heavens, no. But uh, it's very possible, I suppose. A man was in her room with her on Sunday night. What? He must have left hurriedly through the window when Rose started groaning. Oh, dear. <laughs> what bad luck. Mm. So that was why she stayed the night. I thought it couldn't have been concerned for me. She sat there in her charming little doll's house looking like a piece of porcelain. I remember I felt contented and rather sleepy. I had a job to stay awake. After all that Calvados, I'm not surprised. <laughs> That's another seaside hazard. I feel as if I'm on holiday, indolent, unfocused. It's a job to concentrate. How long did you stay with Valentine? Oh, an hour or two. And when I got back, the light was fading. It was aperitif time. I went into the casino bar. Actually, I spent quite a time there. The barman turned out to be an old acquaintance of mine, Johnny from the Rue Danou. Well, 
Eventually I went back to my hotel for dinner. I had a surprise. Good evening, Inspector. I'm Arlette Soudre. Oh, uh, good evening, madame. I would like to speak to you in private. Uh, well, that's a little difficult as we're not at the Quai des Orfèvres. I don't quite see where, um... No, perhaps the easiest way would be for you to have something to eat with me. I could ask for a quiet table. Yes, that seems to be the best idea. So you've come back from Paris? Yes, I got back late this afternoon. Why? Surely you can guess. Was your mother expecting you? No, I couldn't let her know. She isn't on the telephone. I've just been up there. Only stayed long enough to leave my case. And quarrel, as usual. What do you intend to do? Hmm? I don't understand your question. Police inquiries stir up mud. I'm married and very fond of my husband. So, what do you intend to do? Your husband doesn't know about your extramarital activities? You choose your words carefully, don't you? Well, if you prefer, I'll be more direct. Your husband doesn't know you have a lover? No, that's why I came back. Well, why did you leave? I didn't know what my husband would do when he heard the news. I wanted to stop him coming down here. I see. And as soon as you got to Paris, you began to worry. Yes. I telephoned Charles, and he said you were taking over the case. And that reassured you? No. Will my husband find out? It's unlikely. Do you think I tried to poison my mother? Why do you ask me that? Because I was the only person in the house when it happened. And I don't love her. Have you disliked her for a long time? Ever since I found she'd never loved me. How do your stepbrothers feel about her? They don't like her much because she helped my stepfather to run through his fortune. Mm. How did you get on with your stepfather? I was packed off to finishing school in Switzerland straight after the wedding. Mother didn't want me around. I think she was jealous. Of what? My stepfather spoiled me. When I came back to Paris at 17, he hung round me all the time. What do you mean? He came into my room one evening when I was dressing for the theatre. He lost his head and I slapped him. What did he do? Burst into tears and begged me not to tell my mother. He looked ridiculous. Did it happen again? No, never. Were you in love with anyone then? Yes, Teo. Was he in love with you? No, he ignored me. I hid in his room one night and this little dancer came in. I let her know I was there. She went off furious, and I was left with tail. And then? He didn't want to. I almost forced him. And afterwards? There was no afterwards. Why? I suppose he felt embarrassed. And you? I was disgusted with men. But then you got married? Not immediately. For more than a year, I slept with every man who came along. From disgust? Yes. You don't understand, of course. Then? I got sick of it. I tried to end it by getting married and living like everybody else. Did you end it? No. You carried on even after your marriage? Yes. From the first year? From the first month. Why? Because I can't help it. Do you love your husband? Yes. Have you any other questions to ask me? When I've digested what you've told me, I will. Yes. Excuse me, Inspector. Hmm? Um, you're wanted on the telephone. No, who by? Monsieur Charles Besson. Ah, excuse me. Will you wait for me? Yes. Yes? Uh, Chief Inspector Maigret. Speaking. I'm terribly sorry. I tear you away from Paris, and I'm not even there to welcome you. I assure you, I did intend to be at the station, but I had to leave for Dieppe last night. My wife's mother has died. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, she had no sons. I was the only man in the house, so I had to stay. I'm back at Fecom now. I could drive straight over if you like. Well, that's not necessary, unless you have anything new to tell me. No, I don't really know anything about Sunday night. You won't have found out already. Uh, would it suit you, then, if I came round at nine tomorrow morning? No, oh, certainly. I'll see you then. He had to go to Dieppe. 
Has she died at last? Yes. Charles must be delighted. Why didn't he like her? He'd inherit a lot of money. You don't seem in a hurry to get back to your mother's house. I'm not. But please tell me if I'm in the way. No, 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 that's all right. Would you like to go somewhere else? Where? A bar. No, we might meet too. Are you still in love with him? No. Come on, let's go for a walk. It's a fine night. Did anyone else in the family ever know that your stepfather had approached you? Mother knew. I'm sure of it. Well, who would have told her? Nobody. She listened at doors. I want to ask another very personal question. I can predict everything you'll ask me. When did you learn you couldn't have children? Have you have forgotten what I told you? No, it... I never took any precautions. I didn't allow the men to use any. Why? Out of fastidiousness, perhaps. Oh, how did you find out for certain? A young doctor told me. Hmm. Was he your lover? Yes. Now, during those amorous experiences, did you feel any... Enjoyment? Is that what you were going to say? Well, I was going to use the word satisfaction. Never. Suppose your mother suddenly told you she knew about that side of your life. I'd tell her to mind her own business. Well, suppose she threatened to tell your husband. Is that what you've been leading up to? Uh, I got there without intending to. I wouldn't want Julianne to know for anything in the world. But if your mother... If she threatened to make me look dirty in his eyes, I'd do anything to stop her. Including murder? Yes. But the question hasn't arisen yet. Why do you say yet? Because she knows now. She spoke to me about Hervé this afternoon. Well, what did she say? You would be surprised. She can be very foul-mouthed. I shut her up. How? I hit her. Hmm. You really intend to sleep there? I have no choice. Oh, don't be afraid. There won't be any trouble. Mm, fog's coming up. We'd better get back. We turn right to get down again. Have you any more questions? Not at the moment. And? And? Don't you want to make the most of me? What? All I've been saying was meant for you, you know. Be quiet. You are tempted, aren't you? I'm going back. Sorry. Hmm. I behaved like an idiot. You did. What time is your train tomorrow? Eight in the morning. Unless you keep me here. You can take it. The left path goes down to my mother's house. The right takes you back to the town. Will you come in and have a drink? No. Are you still angry with me? I don't know. Go and get some sleep. Good night, Monsieur Maigret. Good night. And were you? Was I what? Tempted. You said she was beautiful. Well, she was. But her eyes were dead. Big, blue, dead eyes. Not at all like her mother's, really. And Georges, those revelations, she seemed to be too eager to analyse herself, to dirty herself. No, no, I wasn't tempted. So what were your feelings when you walked back down the cliff path? Confused. I was wondering whether I should have given her permission to leave next morning. And I wanted a drink. Yes. Yeah. In those circumstances, I would have too. So you went to the casino bar and saw Johnny. Mm, I did. What's more, I saw Theo Besson, too. Well, Chief Inspector, what's it to be? Mm, a beer, please, Johnny. I'm thirsty. Right, hello. There we are. You're busy tonight, aren't oh, you? Not too bad, not too bad. Can't complain. There we are, Inspector. Thank you. Good help. You uh, know who that is over there? 
Hmm? Not the tall man in English tweeds? No. Teo Besson. Oh. Is he often in here? Yeah, but uh, not here particularly. He does the rounds of all the bars in the place. <laughs> he drinks like a fish. <laughs> Who's that with him? Ori Troshu, the dead girl's brother. Mm. Did they come in together? Yeah. Teo was friendly with Rose, you know. Was he? You don't mean he... Oh, no, 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 I never saw him lay hands on her, but they chatted and laughed together. And <laughs> he tried to get her tight. <laughs> oh, that was difficult. Two glasses did it. When did you last see them together? Oh, about a week ago. Mm. And the first time? Oh, a couple of weeks before that. Oh, they're going. Uh, good night, monsieur. I slept badly and had nightmares. Those last beers had been a mistake. I woke to high seas and the sound of the fog siren. Arlette would be away to Paris by now. But at nine, I had to meet Charles Besson. I hoped he wouldn't shout. I do hope I haven't kept you waiting, Chief Inspector. Uh, oh, no. No, no, that's all right. No, do you mind if we talk here? Oh, of course uh, not. They haven't done my room yet. This suits me perfectly. Can I ask you something? Anything. Are you fond of your stepmother? Oh, yes, very. She's always been good to me. Uh, what about your brother, Teo? Uh, there was a coldness there, certainly. Did he come with you willingly to Valentine's dinner? Well, I made him see how silly it was to stay on bad terms with her. Mm, how did he behave? Like a gentleman. The whole family was at the dinner, I gather. Hmm. Was there anything which gave you a hint of tragedy? Nothing at all. Look, Inspector, I think you're on the wrong track. It was to avoid this sort of misunderstanding that I asked him to send you down. We're a perfectly ordinary, happy family. I'm sure there's some simple explanation. Rose is dead. Oh, someone must have come in. A tramp, perhaps. Someone who waited till the house was crowded and then got in and slipped poison into a glass. Yes, it's all very confused, certainly. But uh, tell me, Inspector, in confidence, what do you suspect? I have no definite suspicions, Monsieur Besson. Uh, incidentally, I came here because you asked, of course, but also because your stepmother came up and saw me. What? She came up to Paris and asked for you? Yes. That's odd. I wouldn't have thought she'd have heard of you. Well, she told me she followed my cases in the paper. Huh? Oh, what's the matter? Oh, nothing. It's just that I've never seen her read a paper. I thought she had no interest at all in what was going on outside Etretat. <laughs> You see, you can always find out something new. Look, are you thirsty? I wouldn't mind a drink. Sure. Have you met Teo yet? No. He's almost certainly in the casino bar. If he is, I'll introduce you. Teo, I hoped we'd find you here. Do you know Chief Inspector Megre? How do you do, Inspector? How do you do? Have you seen Valentine since Sunday? No. Are you staying here long? I... I don't know. <laughs> he's a funny chap, Inspector. We never know what he's doing from one day to the next. Off to London, Brussels, Chamonix. That's you, isn't it, Teo? Monsieur Teo, when did you last have a meeting with Rose? With Rose? Do you want the exact date? If possible. <laughs> I haven't got that kind of memory. Did you meet her often? Well, two or three times. When I first met her, I didn't know she was my mother's maid. Oh, where was this? At the Vaucotte Fair. Oh, you are a dark horse. I didn't know you ran after housemaids. We were both watching the sack race. We got bored with the fair. I offered her a lift home. Is that all? Is this an interrogation? No, but you're the first person I met who knew anything about the girl. What did you think of her? Little peasant girl who read too much and didn't understand what she was reading. Was there anything between you? Absolutely nothing. She thought marriage was a very dirty thing. <laughs> it's her own expression. <laughs> In fact, you were amusing yourself by making a character study. Did you know her brother before her death? Only by name. She didn't like her family. Well, then how did you meet Henri? He stopped me on the street. He thought, like you, that I'd seduced his sister. I convinced him that I hadn't, and he calmed down. Did he bear a grudge against you? No. Against Valentine, though. Why? That's his business. 
Did Rose show any sign of wanting to kill herself? No, no, never. She was very scared of dying. She was a bit of a hypochondriac. Took a whole army of patent medicines. Was she fond of Valentine? No. The two women, living together, morning till night. How could they be fond of each other? Hmm? Is that all? Yes, for the moment. Thank you, monsieur. <laughs> oh, Inspector, it's not true. Hmm? Tell me it's not true. Why, what's so funny? <laughs> You'd have to know Theo. He's a terrible, terrible snob. Ah. Theo and Rose. Good heavens. But tell me, where did they go? Well, they had a drink together occasionally. I hope he didn't meet her here. Climbing in through the window like my daughter's lover. Well, he says not. No, that would have been too much. Inspector, as you're here, you must have a drink. A little calvados? No, oh, no, thank you, madame. I have to meet Inspector Castan, and your fresh air makes me sleepy enough as it is. Where are you going now? I am going to pay a visit to Ypres, to the girl's family. Shall I drive you? No, I want you to find Theo Besson. Well, that won't be difficult. I only have to go around the bars. And then? Well, nothing. Just watch him. Don't let him out of your sight. Right. Now, where can I get a taxi? I suppose you're the boss of the one who came before. I'm Chief Inspector Maker. What do you want this time? You've collected your daughter's things? Yes. Yes, it was my right. Of course. I just want to see them. You shouldn't be bothering us. My daughter's dead. And it's those others you should be questioning. The ones you're so careful to leave in peace. That's right, Mother. Madame, your daughter is dead. Poisoned. There may be something among her possessions that'll help us to find out who did it. Do you want her murderer caught? I... Well... Jean. Hmm? We'd better show him the ring. Yes, I've... I've got it here in my pocket. Thank you. Hmm. Did your daughter have any other pieces of jewellery? No. Found it at the bottom of a shoe in a little ball of newspaper. Uh, it worried me. I took it to a jeweller in Fécon. And, and he said... Yeah? He said it was an emerald. Henri, was that the reason you were with Tail? Yes, I went to ask him if he'd given Rose the ring. He, he swore he hadn't. Can you let me have it for a day or two? Oh, it's not ours. If you take it away, you must give us a receipt. Oh, yeah, of course. And then I'll leave you in peace. Uh, can you give me a lift to Etretat? There are some things I've got to do. Yes. You can drop me at the casino bar. Good evening, Castor. Oh, hello. How did you get on with the Trochu family? Oh, some surprises. I've just dropped the son at the casino bar. On duty outside Theo's hotel, I see. Yes. He hasn't spoken to a soul all evening. Mm. He went up to his room a few minutes ago. That's his light on up there. Uh, well, perhaps he's going to bed. Shall I keep on watching? Yes. What are you going to do? I'm going to say good night to Valentine. There she is, in the living room. Better call out. She may be scared if she hears an intruder. What the hell? The light's gone out. <laughs> ah, you... Who's there? Hmm? Oh, it's... It's me, May Gray. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Mm. I'll put the light on again straight away. Mm -hmm. There. I'll let you in. Aye. You see? I'm not as brave as I make out. <laughs> and I barricade myself in. Come in. Thank you. What would you like to drink? Oh, nothing, thank you, madame. Ever since I came here, I seem to have been drinking from morning till night. Has anybody paid you a visit since I left? No one. I paid a visit myself to old Mademoiselle Fury, my nearest neighbour. I like living alone, but sometimes I'm a bit nervous. When I heard your step, 
I've often wondered what I'd do about a night prowler. I decided I'd switch off my light and then switch on the garden light outside so that I could see without being seen. Oh, it's an excellent idea. Were you worried about me? Oh, I just wanted to be sure everything was all right. Well, I hope you're not going to condemn some poor inspector to spend the night on the road in order to protect me. Oh, if you let me know, I'll put a camp for bed in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be getting back to my hotel. Oh, one glass before you go, Inspector, please. Mm? All right, on condition you have one with me. Are you still there? His light's still on. Yeah. You didn't meet Rose's brother again, did you, Chief? He went past an hour ago, zigzagging all over the place. Well, which way was he heading? We went down the street and turned right. Are we staying here? Yes. Do you think Teo's going to come out? Well, I don't know. Are you sure he didn't speak to anyone that evening? Mm, quite sure. What's the time? Midnight. Well, perhaps he's reading in bed. Oh, what an idiot. What? Oh, I forgot to tell you. Nobody spoke to him, but in the bar at the post, he was called to the telephone. What? When was this? Just after eight. Well, come on. I'm going to check he's in his room. You wait in the hall. He's gone. So is his car. Oh, Chief, I'm so terribly We'd sorry. We'd better get I... your car. Uh, Monsieur Maigre, hmm? uh, somebody's just telephoned Who? Oh. Well, I don't know. A man. You're asked to go up to the old lady's place at once. He said you'd understand. Monsieur Besson, what's happened? He's in here, Inspector. Hurt? Dead. Henri Trochu. Oh, devil. What happened, Doctor? He's been shot. The bullet lodged in the aorta. It's horrible, Inspector. It all happened so soon after you left. What happened? Oh, I forgot to turn on the second switch. The garden light. I was upstairs in bed, you see, and I heard a noise. Where was the revolver? By my bed in a cupboard. I came downstairs. Without switching on the light? Yes. Someone was trying to open the door. I called. Who was there? Nobody answered. Did you shoot straight away? I don't think so. I called again several times. Then I fired. I killed that poor boy. When did you find who it was? When I opened the door. I went over to Mademoiselle Suris and telephoned the doctor and asked him to tell you. And tell? I found him here when I came back with the doctor. She won't go to bed and let me give her an injection. She'll collapse if she isn't careful, won't you persuade her? I don't think that it's necessary. Oh, well, in that case... I I've left a couple of tablets in your room, madame, in case you change your mind. I shall be at your service if you need me, Inspector. Thank you. Madame, and you, Monsieur Besson? We'd better go into the sitting room. Castan, have you got your notebook? Uh, yes, Chief. Sit at the table, take notes. Uh, Inspector, a little calvinus. No. <gasps> uh, uh, Sit down. Uh, Monsieur Besson, where were you when he was killed? By the gate. Are you feeling proud of yourself? You knew she had a revolver? Yes. Uh, will you please inform well, me I'm if I... asking the questions. And if I refuse to answer? I may decide to hit you. The thing I've been wanting to do for the last half hour. How long have you known? Known what? That your stepmother's jewellery was never sold. That they're the originals and not, as she said, the imitations. I always suspected it. What was their value? Several million francs. Why didn't you tell your brother your suspicion? Because I was not certain. Are you sure it wasn't because you hoped to come to some arrangement with Valentin? I refuse to answer. You came to Etretar to find out. You made Rose's acquaintance to find out. Rose was ferreting about before she met me. How did she know about the jewels? She, she got a gimlet. She bored a little hole in the wall separating her room from my stepmother's. She saw Valentine put the jewels away. She took the ring while Valentine was having a bath. Madame Besson? It's all lies. We can take the jewellery and find out. Well, it was my right. My husband agreed with me. When did you find the ring was missing? I won't answer. It was probably last week. You knew the thief must be Rose. 
So you decided to kill her before she had time to betray you. You knew she was a hypochondriac with a passion for patent medicines. She'd probably finished off your sleeping draft before, so it was easy. Well, how could anyone suspect you when you seemed to be the intended victim? You weren't even alarmed until you heard that Charles Besson had asked the minister to send me. You're very modest, Monsieur Maigre. So you came to see me yourself. You've no proof? I told you about Theo and Rose quite deliberately. I knew you'd react. Try to see Theo before I questioned him. Perhaps shut him up for good. So you went to Mademoiselle Sere and telephoned all the bars till you found Theo. You asked him to come up here at midnight. But you had no intention of talking to him. You were going to kill for the second time. Isn't that what happened, Monsieur Besson? I cannot reply to that question. A gentleman does, does not... Does a gentleman encourage a servant to commit a theft? Does a gentleman send someone else to be murdered in his place? You thought about it and began to suspect a trap. Then poor Henri, half drunk, staggered into the bar. So you sent him on ahead. Into Valentine's trap. What trap? No, you'd played the prelude to me earlier in the evening. The trick about the switch, which gave you an excuse for having fired in a panic before you turned on the outside light. Only, you killed the wrong man. Well, are you going to handcuff me? No. You'd love that. It'll make you look like a victim. Cast her and take her away. After all, it was a woman's crime. Poison. More. It was the crime of an old woman living alone. It had been nursed for a long time. Thought of lovingly for hours and hours. Yes. Well, they took her away. Next day, I left for Paris. There was no fog and the wind had dropped. It was a beautiful day. The sea was calm and there were just a few clouds in a sky that was brilliantly blue. The same blue as Valentine's eyes. In Maigret and the Old Lady by Georges Simenon, translated by Robert Bray, and adapted for radio by Betty Davis, Maigret was played by Maurice Denham, Simenon by Michael Goff, and Valentine Besson by Amy Delamay. Arlette Sudre, Diana Olson, Charles Besson, Douglas Blackwell, Theo Besson, Aubrey Woods. Inspector Castin, Michael Harbour, Trochu, Bruce Beebe, Madame Trochu, Shirley Dixon, Henri Trochu, Peter Craze, Police Chief William Edel, Johnny Walter Hall. Other parts were played by William Edel, Walter Hall, Bruce Beebe, and Peter Craze. And the play was produced and directed by Betty Davis. Mm -hmm.